Gotabaya Rajapaksa has just resigned as the president of Sri Lanka. Word coming in that the speaker has received his resignation just a few minutes ago. Protesters who've been uh, camped at government buildings for almost a week now in Colombo have begun to burst crackers. Uh, they had, of course, uh, spent the last few months with a rallying cry of go, Gota, go. And finally, Gota has, well, literally gone. He's left the country and now it appears that he has also resigned as Sri Lanka's president. A dramatic development coming uh, just a day after his equally dramatic exit from Sri Lanka uh, in the middle of the night, flying out to the Maldives on a special Air Force plane. And uh, he and his wife escaping with their bodyguards and, and going uh, to the Maldives first. And this morning then uh, have flown out to Singapore uh, where they have landed earlier today. The Singapore Foreign Ministry uh, saying that uh, this is a personal visit uh, by Gotabaya Rajapaksa. It is not uh, a question of asylum. He didn't ask for it nor has he got it. Uh, and purely a private visit. It's not going to be his last destination, his last stop. It is expected that that could be the UAE or perhaps any other country. Uh, but importantly, he has resigned and that paves the way. Uh, for Sri Lanka's parliament to now choose a new president because as per the law in Sri Lanka and as per the Sri Lankan constitution, if the president resigns, uh, then the parliament has to choose one of the MPs as the next president. And the next president then goes on to complete the term uh, of the president who had resigned from the post. We're going to try and go across to my colleague Shrija in just a moment. She's been reporting uh, from Colombo, but this uh, is an important step uh, in Sri Lanka, given the political vacuum that the country has seen for the last few days, uh, ever since Gotabaya Rajapaksa, particularly after he fled uh, in the middle of the night, uh, or early morning yesterday, uh, appointing uh, Prime Minister Ranil Vikramasinghe as the interim president. That only enraged protesters even more. Uh, they laid siege to the Prime Minister's office. They occupied it. And uh, ultimately, uh, we have seen that their protests, in a sense, have paid off because their whole uh, rallying cry was to get Gotabaya Rajapaksa to go. Now they want Ranil Vikramasinghe to go. But this certainly now kicks in the process of uh, uh, getting a new president in Sri Lanka soon. Uh, and that is what the Sri Lankan parliament, in fact, has to uh, do. Uh, earlier, in fact, uh, my colleague Srija had also spoken to Sajid Premadasa, the leader of the opposition, who could now be the new president, in fact, because uh, Sri Lanka's opposition has decided to nominate him for the interim president's post uh, or, or the next president's post um, until elections can be held, which would be still some months away. The country is, of course, facing a dire economic crisis, uh, which any new leadership would have to deal with. Uh, immediately. It's also not clear uh, what happens to Gotabaya Rajapaksa from here. Uh, once he resigns as president, it's understood that he also uh, would no longer enjoy immunity from arrest. And um, it was widely being reported in the Sri Lankan media that he uh, delayed his resignation, which he had first promised would happen yesterday on the 13th of July, uh, because he was looking for safe passage for his family members uh, from Sri Lanka. Uh, his brother, one of his brothers, Basil Rajapaksa, also is said to have flown out of the country on the same night uh, that Gotabaya left. It's a big uh, fall from grace for the Rajapaksa family, which as a political dynasty in Sri Lanka really has uh, been uh, at the helm of affairs now for more than 20 years. And uh, Gotabaya Rajapaksa was in fact uh, considered a war hero at one time. He was the defense minister of Sri Lanka. Uh, in 2009, when his brother Mahinda uh, was leading the country and when uh, the LTTE was defeated, the Tamil rebels were defeated in that bloody civil war. Uh, at that time, the Rajapaksas were truly hailed as national heroes, uh, particularly by the majority Sinhalese community. And in 2019, uh, soon after the Easter bombings uh, that took place, there was a wave of nationalism that swept through Sri Lanka and Gotabaya Rajapaksa got a, a very thumping majority. He was elected president. Some months later, his brother Mahinda was made prime minister uh, and uh, they really had complete control uh, over Sri Lanka. Uh, many experts pointing out that their popularity was at an all-time high for the last two or three years and it would have been unimaginable today uh, that uh, Gotabaya Rajapaksa is in exile uh, now, uh, uh, out of the country, is in exile currently in Singapore and who knows where next, uh, while the rest of the Rajapaksas have effectively had to either leave Sri Lanka as well or uh, are just keeping a very low profile. So 
This could be the beginning of the end of the Rajapaksa dynasty politically and certainly marks a huge turning point uh, in Sri Lanka and uh, its uh, political trajectory. We'll bring you much more on that story.